Hey, this is Tournament Takeaway, where we take a look at a battle, study it, break it down, um, take what we've learned from it, and take it into future battles to become better battlers. Um, today we're going to uh, find out the answer to a question that has been plaguing the Pokemon Go PvP community for an entire week. Um, everyone's talking about it. It's all over the internet. Um, you know, uh, non-PVPers are weighing in. People from other games have been uh, leaving their game to, to come and play Pokemon Go and weigh in on this debate. Like, I've seen so many uh, Fortnite players <laughs> dropping Fortnite for a whole week to, to study this. Uh, every, everyone, like people who don't even know about Pokemon are, uh, are talking about it. Uh, the Australian Prime Minister gave an address uh, like about this issue. <laughs> it is, how did my opponent get as much energy as, as they did? Um, it was a question that I raised last week uh, in my video. I will post a link there. Um, go ahead and watch it to get caught up. I can wait. You're back. Ah, sweet. Um, how was it? Good? No, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Um, so, now that you're all caught up, uh, let's get to the the resolution, the answer, the, the solve the mystery, I guess. Uh, so, a few days after that video came out, I was contacted by a very high level player in Australia called Anisotropic. Um, I want to give him the biggest of shout outs because he <laughs> gave me a quite a long message saying which began with like um hey i just saw your video and i've done uh, a lot of study and i think i've figured out the answer to your riddle and uh i gotta warn you it's some high level shit so it's taken me multiple goes to explain this in a coherent manner and if you're relatively new or even like mid-level like me it'll probably go over your head um it's 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 some complicated shit <laughs> um, but let's give it a go so um it all begins with the mantine ferrothorn matchup now um uh, start with the absolute basics um all, all of Pokemon Go PvP is measured in turns, so uh, a turn is half a second at the moment. Like uh, I, I say that at, um, at the moment because like the the way the the game master file is written, like the Niantic have the ability to change the length of a turn if they want. Um, I don't think they will because you know that would require changing the entire way fast moves work. But at, at the moment they've set it at a turn to half a second. So any fast move that happens um, it takes a certain number of turns from uh, one turn being the quickest or half a second to four turns being the longest or two seconds. Um, also, when you switch your Pokemon, that takes one turn. So like that takes up a half second block of time. Uh, when you throw a charge move, that also takes up a turn. So say your opponent throws a a fast move, you throw a charge move, uh, that fast move and that charge move will both take up one turn, essentially. So, um, I've, I've, uh, no, uh, the Mantine's thrown a charge move here, and let's just slow this right down to give us time to talk about it. And so, after a Pokemon throws a charge move, the timing of the moves resets. So, Ferrothorn here is running Bullet Seed, which takes three turns, and Mantine is uh, throwing Wing Attack, which takes two turns. A three-turn move versus a two-turn move. Mantine switches out, as you can see there, on the second turn of my Bullet Seed. So, as we've just said, switching takes one turn. So, at that point, my Bullet Seed's completed two of its three turns. The Ampros comes in, and again, if you don't know, um, a Pokemon will start firing a move at, like at the moment you hit that switch button. So even though we can't see the animation there of the Volt Switch happening, 
it's already throwing a bolt switch. You might have seen there that I had the, the power whip ready, but instead of throwing a power whip, I threw another bullet seed. Let's speed that back up again. So you watch. I've hit the power whip and another bullet seed's thrown. Show it again. You can see the, the seeds flying to Ampharos. Okay, so. Uh, what's happened so far then? On the, on the second turn of my bullet seed, the Mantine switched out. On the third turn of my bullet seed, Ampharos has thrown a Volt Switch. Now that is a, a four turn move Volt Switch. So um, that means that when I throw the accidental Bullet Seed, the Overtap, the Volt Switch has three turns remaining. And that of course means that by the time my three turn Bullet Seed is finished, that extra uh, three turns of the Bolt Switch also completes. We didn't see that Bolt Switch at all, because by the time uh, by the time everything kind of unfolded, the, my game had already uh, gone into the the, anima the the animation for the charge move. So we just didn't see that at all. And um, an Isotropic absolute legend, <laughs> um, he also like sent me screenshots of the the Ferrothorn's health bar um, before and after the switch out, and they they are different. Um, even though we don't see like that little bit of orange indicating that health has just depleted, um, there, there was missing HP. What's worse is that, as we just said, the, the bullet seed and the bolt switch, just before I threw my charge move, completed at the same time. But throwing a charge move costs one turn. So when I throw my queued up charge move, that Ampharos starts another Volt Switch. And when you do throw a charge move, any fast moves that have been thrown already, they just complete the rest of their, their turns for free. And it all kind of resets uh, from the beginning once the charge move is finished. So I've gone into this charge move here, and <laughs> meanwhile Ampharos is getting another Volt Switch in. And we can see that here, if we slow that down, you can see two very quick firing bolt switch animations. Straight away, right, so that, when we first looked at that last week, we assumed that, uh, you know, that was the game catching up on the move that it threw when it first switched in, but, it had already gotten credit for that move. And that extra animation we saw was a third Volt Switch. So <laughs> that's, okay, so what can, what can we take from that? Um, this is uh, something that, I mean, high level players have already started to get a handle on this, which is the magic of timing fast moves. Um, and, and charge moves really, like, if you time your moves correctly, you can stop your opponent from getting extra energy like that. Um, and now, in my case, um, the reason they got that extra energy was more because of my overtap of the charge move, because I, I allowed an extra <laughs> um, bullet seed to go through, which meant that uh, the, the timing of the fast moves matched up, and then I threw a, a charge move at the same time as they started the next, the second bolt switch, right? If I hadn't overtapped, then they would have only gotten one bolt switch in, and that's the bolt switch that they threw when they switched in. Um, if you can uh, time it yourself so that you're throwing fast moves uh, while they're trying to throw their charge move, then you can get yourself free energy. And that can make a huge difference. You can see in this case, you know, 
they managed to get to a whole other Thunder Punch because they managed to get three whole turns of free energy. And Volt Switch is a high energy move. It's 16 energy per Volt Switch. So I guess if you, if you want to break that down, like, you know, energy per turn, that's an extra, you know, 12, 12 energy, essentially, that they've gotten for absolutely free. Uh, so, you know, if, you, if you're wondering how to get to the next level kind of uh, raise your game this is probably what you need to look at uh, studying how to uh, how to how to match up the timing of your moves with the timing of your opposing pokemon's move in a way that maximizes the amount of free energy you get and uh, minimizes the amount of free energy that your opponent gets i really want to uh, start walking you through how exactly to do that, but that's a whole other, you know, that is a whole, you know, course in the curriculum, so I don't think we've got uh, the time or resources to be able to do that today. I just want to get you kind of started on that train of thought. How do you, uh, how do you learn how your fast moves and their fast moves interact, and how do you uh, how do you start being strategic with the the precise moments that you switch out and the precise moment that you throw your charge move? Um, that's it for today. Hopefully, um, you did take something from this. Um, we'll be back next week with uh, probably a whole new mystery <laughs> to solve. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you can build that ranking, and I'll see you then.